Greetings, all! Today, we will be examining the mythical Psychotype Pokemon Mew, the new species Pokemon. Though they might not have much to them to suggest that they would be any sort of threat, Mew are dazzling and unique creatures whose powers and adaptability are truly the stuff of myths. Mew have small feline bodies covered in light pink soft fur, with a small pair of upper limbs with three tiny fingers, while the lower legs are much larger and thicker, with especially long feet and toes. They have a long, thin tail that thickens into a bulbous end, while they have a rounded, slightly triangular head with small ears, a small mouth, and large blue eyes. To put it bluntly and shortly, Mew are about as mysterious as they come when it comes to Pokemon. Although relatively simple in terms of external appearances, the genetics of these strange creatures hold more information about the natural world than the human race has managed to learn in the course of its existence. When Mew was first officially described as a species immediately prior to the events of the now infamous Mewtwo incident, it was officially given a moniker of the new species Pokemon because it truly was new in one very important way. It was seemingly genetically related to not just one, but almost all living wild Pokemon, with the obvious exception of some legendary artificial Pokemon and fossil Pokemon. As far as anyone knows, Mew have the ability to naturally learn and utilize almost every single move in existence and are able to wield them all remarkably well despite only having a true advantage with psychic type attacks. In addition, Mew have their own set of interesting abilities and techniques, including the ability to bend light so as to appear invisible, which in turn partially explains why they are so difficult to locate, the ability to learn the abnormal reflect type technique, the power to generate energy shields capable of reflecting most physical and special attacks without harming the opposition, with Mew often enjoying playing with others by sealing them inside the bouncy shields for fun, and using the transform technique to take on the likeness of any other Pokemon. However, despite this amazing range of powers, Mew are incredibly rare, and are generally only seen once every couple of years or even decades in a given area. As such, it was widely believed for a time that Mew were merely legends and did not actually exist whatsoever. It was only after the Mewtwo incident that research directed towards the species actually began. This means there is relatively little data available on their choice of habitat or behavioral patterns, making any description difficult to make. There are, however, some things that actually can be said. First of all, Mew possess incredibly fine hair, so fine in fact that can only be directly observed under a microscope, which might explain not only their light bending abilities, but also their preference towards tropical climates. Secondly, Mew are exceptionally shy and will never reveal themselves to anyone unless they are pure of heart and have a strong desire to see Mew. This could possibly mean that Mew have had bad experiences with humans in the past, or otherwise fear what we might be capable of, but the true reason is still uncertain. From this, it has further been observed that Mew are in possession of the synchronized ability as a consequence of their genetic capabilities mixed in with their raw psychic power. Lastly, as far as the stats are concerned, these beasts are quite well rounded in their base stats as a whole, and even if they don't actually excel in anything, they are still quite powerful across the board, with only the base special attack stat being below average for fully evolved psychic type Pokemon, and thus can be quite the troublemakers when they choose to be. Mew have been involved in relatively few incidents throughout recorded history, but there are two in particular that do deserve to be mentioned. The first one is perhaps the most infamous of all cases, and is the reason why many scientists fear what genetic manipulation in the wrong hands can produce. The Mewtwo Incident. According to official reports, Dr. Fuji, a scientist working for Team Rocket, had been tasked with finding a Mew, the rarest Pokemon on Earth at the time, and cloning it for combat purposes by Giovanni. An expedition to Guiana to find the creature proved to be a relative failure, as the only thing that was recovered was a fossilized eyelash hair from what they believed to be a Mew. Undeterred, however, the scientists and his colleagues began a long and difficult process attempting to clone the DNA and produce fruitful copies of the original. All, however, led to utter failure. In response, the scientists began to physically manipulate not only the hair's genetics, but the genetics of other Pokémon, hoping to find a stable method of producing a viable clone that was both more powerful than and just as stable as the original one. In the process, many lives were born and ended before they even lived, including a clone of Dr. Fuji's deceased daughter. In time, however, a single superpowered clone managed to survive the process and reach adulthood, the monster now known as Mewtwo. One day, however, Mewtwo unexpectedly woke up and, furious over being treated like a lab rat, destroyed the entire facility and almost all the people within it. Giovanni personally began to teach Mewtwo how to control its psychic powers afterwards, but only for a time. Once Mewtwo realized it was being used, it broke free of Giovanni's grasp and escaped. Several months later, approximately 25 years ago from the present, 
A group of young trainers were invited to attend a prolific celebration in their honor, granting them the chance to battle the most powerful Pokemon trainer alive on an isolated fortress on a small patch of land called New Island. It was only after arriving that Mewtwo revealed itself to be the challenger they had been seeking. Believing all non-clone lifeforms to be inferior, Mewtwo captured all the trainer's Pokemon, cloned them, and forced the two sides to fight one another. In the middle of the conflict, however, a Mew appeared and began battling with its deranged counterpart until one of the young trainers stepped in the way of their blast and became petrified by the combined psychic energies. While it is uncertain how it happened, it appears that the sympathy of all the other present Pokemon demonstrated in response to this tragedy, including the cloned ones, was enough to destabilize the intense psychic bond, freeing the young trainer. It was only after this that Mewtwo realized that all life deserved to exist and, regretting his decisions, journeyed off with Mew and the cloned Pokemon to parts unknown. The second incident of interest is the Tree of Beginning incident, which took place near Cameron Palace in the Council region 18 years ago. Long ago, before capture devices were invented, there was a bloody war ensuing between two groups of people and Pokemon. Cameron Palace, part of the once independent kingdom of Rota, which remained neutral in the conflict, was unfortunately stuck in the middle of things and was sure to be destroyed in the crossfire. Sir Aaron, a loyal servant of the Queen residing in the palace, and his Lucario attempted to stop the armies, but to no avail. At that time, Sir Aaron sealed his Lucario within his staff and journeyed off in search of some answer. No one was sure what happened at the time, but a wave of energy emanated from an ancient plant known as the Tree of Beginning, calming the two armies and preventing certain destruction. Many centuries later, a young boy accidentally released Lucario from the staff because he shared the same aura pattern as Sir Aaron. Coincidentally, one of that trainer's Pokémon had been taken away by a local Mew at around the same time, forcing the two unlikely allies to work together. Upon reaching the Tree of Beginning, however, the young trainer's friends were assaulted by energy-based beings that effectively served as the tree's defense systems. Because it had not needed to use them in some time, however, the Tree of Beginning began to become sick from absorbing the bodies of the intruders, namely the boy's other friends, and literally began to die. It was only upon reaching the tree's heart that the truth about Sir Aaron was revealed. In a desperate attempt to prevent the armies from finding each other, Sir Aaron had to combine his aura powers with that of the local Mew in order to energize the Tree of Beginning, generating the wave of energy that eventually calmed the armies. In doing so, however, Sir Aaron became crystallized within a crystal of pure aura. With the assistance of the local Mew, the young boy in the Lucario managed to heal the Tree of Beginning through the same process, but as the major contributor of aura, the Lucario unfortunately met the same exact fate as his master and became crystallized right alongside him. To this day, there have been no further issues with people invading the Tree of Beginning, nor has the local Mew played as many unfortunate pranks as before. With so little known about these creatures, it's really hard for us to be set on Mew that can't be seen as hearsay or conjecture by at least some people. These mythical Pokémon are among the hardest to see and locate, not just because of their skittish nature, but because their access to the transform technique, as they are able to change themselves to literally look like any Pokémon they desire to resemble. As such, it's entirely possible that a lot of people have indeed seen one of these beasts. They likely just have no way of knowing it. That being said, it can at least be seen that Mew are incredibly playful and fun-loving critters and enjoy using their time for entertainment rather than battle but they can easily fight with decent gusto if they are forced into a combat role. The fact that they can be taught pretty much any move by artificial means makes them the perfect Swiss army knight for any team as well. So while they might look cute and cuddly, these beasts can sure as I give a good fighting effort on any team and prove to be too much for many to handle. Truly among the rarest of Pokemon to see, and a potent threat to those that underestimate them, Mew are indeed just as adorable as they are quick and nimble, and will likely do everything they can to stay out of the sight of others. As such, their journey to even find one of these felines can be more than arduous, but fortune might just favor those that approach them with nothing but good intentions in their heart. Just do yourself a favor and make sure that you keep your eyes open if you ever want a glimpse of this creature in its true form in the wild, or it might just pull a prank when you least expect it and leave you wondering just what sort of beast you may have actually encountered. Thank you all for watching this video. It always brings me great joy to see others enjoying the work I do to try and make the world of Pokemon and the fascinating creatures that lay inside of it feel as real as they possibly can. If you really enjoy my work, please feel free to leave a comment and subscribe as I always do my best to respond to any and all comments that are left on my videos. In addition, if you wish to learn more about my work and help support it, you can find links to my Patreon page as well as email and other content information to my work on DeviantArt in the video description down below. Furthermore, you can find a link to my Discord server there as well if you'd like to get a first glimpse at what videos are coming up next and converse with other fans of the world of Pokemon. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch this, and have a wonderful rest of your day.